Hello, good evening. This is September 23rd and um, we are back with CJH Live. So thank you for joining us. Um, it is still National Suicide Prevention Month. And so we are, um, we are bringing a um, topic tonight. Um, something that uh, a lot of us may not be aware of, but um, there are websites out there that actually um, teach our children how to take their own life. Just when we thought we knew all the dangers of the internet, we learn about horrific websites that exist out there like that today. Tonight, we are bringing you a mother who has lost her son um, after, uh, after being on one of these websites. And we would like for her to share her story tonight and tell you um, all about the um, progress that she has made and to shut these websites down. Um, it's, it's just horrific to know that we even have to do um, that in today's age. But, you know, um, we've got to do everything we can to protect our children. So let me introduce you to Kelly Wilson. Um, she is a founder of Stop Sanction Suicide. Um, and I will let you let her tell her story and a little bit about, um, a lot about what she's doing. So welcome, Kelly. I'm so sorry that we're, we're introducing you under these circumstances. But thank you for being with us tonight and thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. So, uh... My son was junior and he is really, I mean, just great kid. I mean, just wonderful in every way. The sweetest soul was always there to help anyone. Um, uh, he had just turned 18. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, he had fell into a depression. This had been going on for months. Um, so there were definitely signs of depression. Um, he tried to commit suicide on uh, February, on, in, beginning of February, uh, taking some pills um, and wasn't successful. Uh, apparently uh, he, I don't, I don't know, but he did. And immediately he was, um, you know, of course at the hospital and, you know, it was very serious at that point. And so he was getting all of the help that he could possibly get. So uh, he got out of the hospital and he was, you know, months went by, COVID happened. That made things a lot more difficult in terms of like reaching out to anyone and, and you know or getting any kind of real help it, it was uh more of like me just trying to take him out and you know get out of the house and get off of his phone and uh things like that um and i will say that after he got out of the hospital i took that phone away from him because i just felt like he was just always on his phone i mean constantly which is kind of a common theme, I think, for anyone right now that has a teenager, you know? Uh, the one thing you know you can do to get there, if you want them to do something, you can just throw it in the phone. So, um, time's going by, and um, I thought he was getting a lot better. He was, uh, that week especially, I mean, he was doing his schoolwork because he's getting ready to graduate from high school. And I mean, he, down to the day before all of this happened. I mean, he was, you know, communicating with online with his teachers about how to make sure he got all these assignments done so he could graduate. And, um, you know, then April 25th rolls around and um, I, uh, that's when everything happened. And I don't really want to get too much into those details because it was just, um, it's just, it's very early still, and it's very hard for me to talk about all those, um, in particulars, but, um, he was gone. He was no longer here. And, um, when I went to his phone, 
he had left a password for his phone uh, for me on, on the front of his phone. And um, when I opened his phone, he had like done it from the notes section. So it, I don't know if you know what that notes app is, but you know, you know what the writing looks like, but it was on there and he left it. I, and when I uh, first opened his phone, it was a note that he had left for me and my family. And right when you swiped out of that, here comes Safari, you know, the, the web, the inter, the web page that he was on. And um, it was a website by, uh, it was a really bad website. Sanctioned Suicide was the name of the website. And um, I just couldn't believe what I was reading. It was, I mean, when I tell you, you had to turn on all the lights in the house, I had to turn on all the lights in the house and had to immediately get out of it. I just could not believe that uh, there were people on there saying and doing what they were saying and doing. So okay. I- uh, what, what, I mean, let's take a okay. step back because okay. I know you've been very heavily involved in all this for months now. Um, the, the normal mom like me has no idea what sanctioned suicide is and has no right. idea what things are on it. So can you right. tell us what sort of things did you find on there when you first opened that, that browser? Um, well, there were actually, uh, you know, whenever you open your phone, if you press the bottom right, like the pages, it will show you different pages that are up. It wasn't, when I pushed that, it was also another page of them, uh, of that site up. So, you know, there was more history going on. Um, oh yeah, there were, uh, basically people on there, uh, giving you, every method and cheering you on and um, on how to kill yourself, exactly what you need to do, exactly what you need to take. Um, you know, things like, uh, you know, what size of rope do you need to use? Or uh, what, I mean, different discussions, people, very in a very manipulative way making you feel like I, I guess I could just say it like normalizing suicide uh, making you feel as someone that's suffering from depression that no one else is going to understand you your parents aren't going to understand you your friends aren't going to understand you all they're going to do is just tell you the same old thing we're your friends and we're here to help you make this happen who are these people? Are they any professionals? Are they teenagers themselves? Or can you can you tell who they are? No, they all hide behind a username, so you don't know who they are. Uh, there's definitely children on there, and if you go to uh, my website, which is fixthe26.com, it will show you a lot of uh, different evidence on there. Um, surveys they've actually published by their own doing and in, in terms of like admitting that there's people under the age of 18 on there on the website so to back it up a little bit and we'll you know start talking about sanctioned suicide a little bit um sanctioned suicide was formed originally on reddit um and it actually says that on their home page at the bottom and they recently just changed their whole interfa interface to be very colorful uh they did that a few days ago I think to make it look a little bit more inviting. Uh, I know it's pretty crazy. So anyways, at the bottom, it clearly tells you that they were formed from, uh, well, from Reddit. Now, let me tell you what Reddit is. Reddit is the sixth most, po most popular site in the United States, okay? It is the 18th most popular site in the world. It's got a lot of users, obviously. What it is, is it's basically a social platform full of millions of what they call subreddits. So if you want to go into, if you go on Reddit, uh, and it works like Quora uh, as well, Quora is the same thing. And most children know very much about what Quora and Reddit is. Of course, I didn't know about Reddit until all of this. I just didn't oh, ever want to read it. I've never so heard it is, is if you type, if you go to Reddit and let's say you type in wedding planning, you're going to have 
a lot of members of what they call a subreddit, meaning that's a subreddit. What, wedding planning is a subreddit. Uh, NBA is a subreddit. So you can join that conversation. Uh, it's just basically a bunch of different forums for people to go in there and engage in conversations. That's what that is. Mm -hmm. And um, that sanctioned suicide actually used to be a subreddit on Reddit. And they shut it down. And when they shut it down, that is when the people, whoever these people are, that love to hide, um, they formed Sanctioned Suicide, this website, okay? Uh, now, still to this day, if you go on to Reddit, you can find other uh, groups that are very similar to Sanctioned Suicide. They just name them different. So they've got depression, uh, time to go, um, sad cringe. It's actually, I think the title I saw that, it said a place for awkward or embarrassing situations that also make you feel sad. There's like almost a million members of that. Depression help, suicide watch, that's another one. And so, let me ask you, Kelly, I mean, it sounds mm -hmm. like, I mean, if you're a teenager and you're, you are depressed and you're looking for a support group and these, these catchphrases or these um, these like theme titles, they sound inviting to where it may, it, does it, I mean, does it kind of sound like a, a chat room or a forum that's supportive? I mean, is that kind of how they lure them in? Or- Okay, uh, so, right. So what what happens in a, in a way, and, and what's going on now, since sanctioned suicide was banned, and the problem with these, uh, you know, forums and on Quora and, you know, they have little groups on Facebook and Instagram and all these, the social platforms that you can think of that your kids are probably on. Um, what happens is someone's on there saying, oh, I'm so depressed, you know, and they're talking about what they're going through and they're getting private message and being led to this particular website oh they're just going to tell you the same old stuff over here if you really want to you know get this taken care of come come over here to this website so that is how you know people are finding out about this site people don't just go in and google it right i mean that's that's how these kids are finding out about it and uh you know junior was on reddit depression and i'm 99 percent sure that that's how he found out about this particular website and um, I obviously am not going to divulge too much information because in case they see this, I'm not, I'm not going to let them know what I know just yet. So anyways, um, that's what Reddit is. And what happens on these social platforms is they use code words so that they're not recognized by the algorithms that these social platforms are trained to recognize, right? So instead of suicide, they're using CTB, which means catch the bus, AKA kill yourself. That's what that means. Um, so what they do, what these kids are doing is they're using code words, code abbreviations and things like that, things that parents won't recognize and algorithms won't recognize so that they won't get called out. That's, that's, that's how that works. And that's how a lot of these people are hearing about these sites. So yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, oh yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So um, with that being said, um, sanctioned suicide and, and what the website does. So when you first go to their webpage or you know, their website, uh, what it does, and I'll just read it to you. I took a little qu a few quotes from it. It says, it is a place to provide a space to discuss the topic of suicide without the censorship of the other places as well as a community that can understand and let you be yourself without judging you. And they, they also go on to say that they do not encourage suicide, promote, advise, nor aid in any way and form, you know, for, for suicide. Uh, however, after you go on that website, uh, which I would, by the way, highly encourage no one to go to that website at all. You don't need to go there. If you want to see just a little bit of what they have, you can go onto my site and it's right there for you to see, to give you an idea. And not only that, uh, they, it's not, they might be able to track your IP address. So it's not, I mean, although it won't tell you the location of your hospital, it'll still tell you the area. And it's just not a place where anyone really actually needs to go. So, um, 
Yeah, so that's basically what they do. They, they highly encourage it. I don't wanna get into too much on exactly what they are saying on there because it's, it's bad. It's bad. It's, it's really, really bad. It's, you just wouldn't believe, you know, that something like this is even legal. Uh, and that's actually a lot of, uh, you know, what people have asked me, how is this legal? How is this legal? And of course I, I started a Facebook group because I, you know, my gut instinct told me, you know, there is just this has, I mean, I had looked it up, found out about a family over there in Pennsylvania, Jackie, Jackie and Chet Bieber, they uh, had lost their daughter last year in May. And uh, they've done a few, you know, stories about this website and spoke with them. And I mean, it's their daughter. And then I did this Facebook group. And now it's almost like at least three times a week, I'm getting contacted by people from all over that have been affected by this site. And most of them, they don't want their identities revealed because they're terrified of these people. They don't want to be in that, you know, world, which I don't blame them. I, I don't want to either, but, you know, at the same time, like this has to stop. So I, um, you know, everyone's like, well, how is this legal? How is this legal, right? How is this legal? Can't you just report this website and get this website taken down? No, you can't do that. And so, that is how Fix the 26 was born. And a lot of people, I, now if you go and you type in stop sanction suicide, it's gonna redirect you to Fix the 26. So that way, you know, the actual name of the organization is Fix the 26. So why Fix the 26? So after I watched a documentary, which I know I've told you about, I am Jane Doe, um, and I saw that it took years for the FBI, the National Center for Exploited and Missing Children to take down that page, which was you know, a, a website that was used to sex traffic children. Mm -hmm. And it took them years. And every time they were going to court, they were getting what they call Section 230 immunity. And I was like, what is a Section 230? What is this? I've never heard of this before. So I started looking it up. And Basically, what Fix the 26 and where the 26 comes from is because they, there was a law created back in 1996. And the law is based on what they, they call the 26 words that they created the internet, okay, which is also AKA Section 2, the Communications Decency Act of Section 230. And so what those 26 words are is that no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as the publisher or speaker of any information provided by another information content provider. Very tricky, it's hard to understand, you know, but to basically summarize it, what that means is that if Facebook has, they, Facebook is not any platform, any website, is not held liable for the user content posted on their site. They're not held liable for it at all. So yeah, right. So um, that's where the whole section 230 comes in. Uh, a lot of people are talking about it right now because of you know Trump with Twitter and they're saying it's they're being, you know, that he's being censored and, you know, this whole free speech thing. Well, I mean, the free speech on the internet, I think it's gone just a little bit too far, you know, and, and there's nothing to really outline uh, what they call the Good Samaritan, uh, which is Section 230C. And what Section 230C actually does is it gives, it gives Google the right to take down this website off of, you know, off of their index if they want to. But they don't want to get involved in it because if they get involved in it, then that's going to start opening up a bunch of, you know, a lot of doors because they're not, they don't really have to. It's free speech right now on the internet. And that's, that's, that's where we're at. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I can tell you the FBI has been contacted on many, many occasions about this website. Um, what did they say? What was their response? I mean, obviously, you're not the mm -hmm. first person to contact them about this, are you? 
So, I'm sorry. Are you the first person to contact the FBI? No, 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 not at all, no. Um, so the way that, the way, what happens with the FBI is you, what they do is they ask, if you call them, what they do is they ask you, have you done an IC3 report, which is a report that you have to submit online and you have to basically outline everything, you know, that's going on. Uh, and I mean, considering it took the FBI that long to take down Backpage, which was clearly, you know, in your face all over the place. It's just something that, I mean, I have definitely got a, not got a response at all. And I can tell you, I've called many times and I've done plenty of reports and I know my family has as well. And I know I, there, I know that there's been reports. I know Jackie has. Um, so, I mean, you just, you don't get a reply. So whether or not they're looking into it, I do not know, but you know, I, I, don't, I don't think they probably tell me if they were, hopefully they are. So um, again, you know, section 230. Wow. Website not held liable for user content. So if you want to open up a website and do these types of things, as of right now, the way that the law is, you can do it. And it's up to, you know, uh, Cloudflare to remove the protection so that we can see who's actually hosting this website, which we can't see right now because Cloudflare uh, doesn't want to give that information. What's yeah. Cloudflare? Cloudflare is uh, it's like a proxy service, uh, which basically, so when you host a website, you have a provider, most popular one is Cloudflare. And what they do is they offer, uh, it's a content delivery network, I think is, I'm, I've learned a lot in the last few months. I'm not really into the technological stuff that I'm learning. And what they do is they actually help uh, the website itself deliver faster service to, you know, on the internet so that it loads quickly and all of that. But they also offer protection uh, so that we, if, you know, the host doesn't want to reveal who they are, they don't have to. So we don't, that's why we don't know who these people are. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so Google has been notified and they know. There's no where to notify Google. No. No. There's nowhere you can't, and if there is, please let me know because I've had a lot of people that actually do this for a living look into it and they're like, they apparently they used to have somewhere where you could notify them, but now they don't. Now they don't have that anymore. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. So, um, so we need someone out there that's listening that knows <laughs> a, a lot more about the internet than we do and about Google and see, um, what we can do about this. Okay, so yeah. I mean, oh my gosh. Honestly, gonna... even if Google is notified, I mean, they're probably not gonna wanna, wanna touch it because then they're opening the doors. I mean, in my opinion, it would be in their better interest to do it because why wouldn't you wanna be the first, per, like the first company that's like, uh, I don't care about section 230 immunity. I don't want this on my index, you right. know? Right. Yeah. but. You know, when there's no, and I think someone that we both know actually reached, reached out to Google directly and spoke with an employee and he also told her, I don't know if you remember that, told her there's something we can do about it. So that's where we're at with the internet, with section 230, and it's very much today's modern day free speech. I mean, you know, uh, it, it's like the first amendment of point of today. Like that's, this is where we all go to receive our mail, our, our mail, our, our news, our all of our information. Our children are required to go on the internet to, I mean, do their homework, you know? And, and here we are sending them out to, to this with really no way to protect them. And I don't think that that's okay. So, I mean, I understand the laws were initially um, made to protect, you know, freedom of speech and all that. I mean, that was 1996, I mean, so many, you know, so much has changed since 1996. Now it seems like these laws are just protecting the providers and not our children. Yeah, um, I mean, this well, is it is. Insane. This is insane. Yeah. Um, that the, the law was actually uh, created in 1996 to help the internet flourish, right? To what it is today, because there was actually a lawsuit done with, I mean, and you can look it up and I'm, I'm gonna be uploading videos to help explain break down section 230 for people because it really is a lot to wrap your head around and it takes a lot of 
And there's a lot of controversy surrounding what it really is and what certain words mean and if or or ah or whatever the word is, like it, it's, you know, it's the law. And so every, literally every word means a lot. Um, but it was actually made to help the internet flourish. Of course, we all know that children weren't really on the internet in 1996. It, it, it's, it just, I wasn't on the internet in 1996. So it's just different today. So uh, obviously I don't at all want section 230 to change in a way that's going to limit one's free speech, but I feel like, you know, crime has become legal on the internet and there's really not a lot we can do to protect our children at all. I mean, I don't know who my child's going on there and interacting with when they're going on to a depression forum. I mean, what are they doing to make sure that my child is even who they say they are? You know, what are they doing if I send them a message and say, hey, you know, someone on your platform is, uh, you know, one of your users is sending my child um, questionable information. What do they do? They do nothing. They do nothing. They do nothing. They say, that's your kid. You're responsible. That's what they do. And I know because I've done it to see, because I want to know what the responses are that I'm going to get if I'm a concerned parent. I want to know what type of support Reddit and companies like this will really give you. And they won't. And that's just the truth, because they're more interested in money. And that's just the way it goes. So right. there's absolutely no positive support from these people on these websites? I mean, it's all... I'm not saying that there, there's not positive support. I'm not saying that, uh, because that, that would be a lie. I'm sure that there is. Um, and I'm not saying that it hasn't helped people. What I'm saying is I don't think that a company like Reddit is... Uh, what would be the word? I don't think that they are capable to give the type of support or protection to someone that is on there trying to get support. I mean, they, they're not doctors. They do not know what's going on. I did not give, I mean, I, I'm just trying to figure out where and what about the little 12 year olds that are on there? You know, I mean, if I have a 12 year old on there and there's plenty of them, I, I feel like I didn't give you permission to talk to my child or let anyone else talk to my child about their depression. It's not okay. If you see some stranger talking to your kid on the side of the road you're, as, as the first instinct, you know, I mean, you're gonna go get them. You don't know what, what's going on in that situation. Well, now we're in 2020 and it's happening on our phones, on their phones. And I mean, most parents have, are now using it as a pacifier for their children. And I don't think that they realize what they're being exposed to. No, I mean, I can't imagine any parent who knew this. Um, yeah. Um, are, are there apps associated with these websites or are they all just mm. from like Reddit? And, because I, I I mean, to be honest, I never even used Reddit, so I don't know how that works. There is an app for Reddit, Sanctioned Suicide, there's not. It's just a, it's just a website, but what, um, and I actually just uploaded that to my site today, a few hours ago, so you can actually take a look and see. Um, there is an app called Discord, which is used, it's very popular among the gaming community. Uh, I believe it started in 2015, well now, it's become more and more popular amongst kids. All the kids know about it. Uh, I didn't know about it, um, but what it's kind of like a Reddit. So you go on there, it's the same setup and it's a lot of chat rooms within Discord. And if you go to uh, Sanctioned Suicide and you're a member um, and you can look at my website again and we'll break it down for you and make a lot more sense. But if you, they will invite you to go into private chat rooms as well uh, on Discord. Specifically, um, I know they do Skype. Um, they do other things. And this is, uh, I mean, it, it's pretty bad. I mean, they literally, there's chats of step-by-step -step of what's going on while someone's dying. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty bad. Um, I, I know that um, whenever I first spoke out, their website went down for you know, two days said migrating servers and when it when it came back up everyone was on there going oh my goodness where do we go if the site's gone you know what am I going to do without you and 
um, they said, PM the moderator and they'll get you in to the Discord, but you have to be a member and you have to PM the moderator so that they can give you that information. They basically want to make sure you're one of them. And now they've made it a little bit harder because I think they're seeing the traffic that's going to their site to check out what they're doing. And they think it might be uh, what they call us as pro-lifers. And um, they want to make sure that we're not getting in there to see uh, what's going on. So, yeah. What do, think, what do you think the intent is of these sites? Well, I will tell you that the same people that have this website, they also have another one called incels.co, which is on the dark, uh, dark web. They have another one that's called Looks Max, and they have another one that I believe is called Black Pill. Uh, they're all very vulgar, very vulgar, but those are on the dark web. Sanctioned Suicide is not, um, and Cloudflare is protecting all of them, by the way. But um, I, yeah, I mean, I think their intention is they have a fetish for death. And when I tell you that they literally will contact and PM people to live stream this stuff and ask them to live stream this stuff, they, they, they do it. They do it. And you got to remember, they, there's a lot of people on here with autism, Asperger's, and these people are already very vulnerable in society. I mean, they're already you know, with challenges up against them. And now here they have, they found a place where they're accepted, where they understand you and, you know, no one else is going to understand you. And in fact, um, and, and their tone has changed in the last month on there um, a little bit. I think it's just so that, you know, people like that are watching today that are going to look and want to see for themselves. Their tone has definitely changed, um, you know, I think that's why they're making this other stuff private so they can go in there and, you know, do things, which is fine because it let, just sends them darker and darker away and which is exactly what needs to happen. Do you think but, their tone has changed because you're starting to, to give a voice to this? You're starting oh, to- Oh, for sure. Well, I'm saying the name. Nobody, you know, the thing is, and what's crazy and sad is I think 10 years ago, if there would have been any news report that would have said, there's a website that's helping you kill yourself that I think that everyone would have freaked out, but now we're being so bombarded by just absolute craziness every single day that you almost have to say the name of the website so that people will believe you uh, and look and see for yourself what's going on in there. I mean, it's, this is not, you know, they've said a lot of bad things about me on there. Uh, they've said bad things about my son because what they do is they make sure that all of their members understand very clearly that when you are about to do this, you need to notify the moderators so the moderators can go in and delete all the messages and ban you. They also teach you how to delete all of the information on your uh, phone, computers, and everything so there are no ties to them. And when I tell you I have, so, I mean, on my website, I only put, so, it's so overwhelming, Ken. I can only put so much, but trust me, I've got a lot. I've got a lot. Um, I just put, I try to cover like on different topics so people can just see, you know, a little bit of, you know, what's going on in there. But I, I'm not going to say anything that's not, you know, that I don't have plenty to back it up with. It's, it's crazy. Do they pretend that they're um, any professionals at all or, or they don't even... Uh, no, in fact, when you mentioned getting uh, help uh, from, you know, a mental health professional, they get very mad at you and will ban you for doing that because you're a pro-lifer and here you are again on here saying what everybody else says to them. I mean, it's really, it's very, it's very cult-like actually. And I, I see that even me, it is really hard to look at that stuff. I mean, I, it's hard to look at that. So I cannot imagine someone feeling and being in a deep depression no. and feeling like just, you know, how my son must have felt and going in there and just like feeling like these people are looking out for them. They're not, they're not looking out and they will really make you feel that way. And just, especially these kids, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot to wrap your head around and it makes me sick to my stomach. And I will tell you, cause I know one of the things that we had, you know, 
kind of went back and forth as are there other websites or forums similar to these? There are, um, but they're not in a forum-based setting. Okay, so there are, so I'm not gonna name them all, but there are, there's five that I know, well, probably four that I know of, but they do not have it set up to where you can PM each other. Um, they, they don't have that. And if they are, if there are some, they're probably gonna be in chat rooms that I don't yet know about, um, but I will find out. I'll find out what they are. I, I just have to get this rolling so uh, you know we can get some kind of law change um, about websites, uh, just like the, uh, I believe it's FOSTA and SESTA, whenever they took down that page, it took them a long time to do that. Um, and now there's a law. So, I mean, Craigslist took their personals ad out. Anytime you report anything on Facebook about anything that has to be sex traffic, with, you know, with sex trafficking, it's down. They don't want to touch it. They don't want to, they don't want to mess with it because, so now we need something like that where, um, well, we need a lot of things like that actually, but I mean, it's a, it's a lot. I mean, you know, there's a lot of hearings going on right now and people are just trying to wrap their head around what is the internet? Like, what is it? How does it guide us? How does it coach us? What is it doing to us as a society? And that's why I was telling you about that um, show called The Social Dilemma. It's a new documentary on Netflix. I mean, you gotta watch it. Clearly talks about suicide rates and how much they've gone up and how the internet is designed uh, to hurt us. And, um, you know, it, and these are of course from all the creators of Facebook and Reddit and so. So what are you doing specifically right now? Um, I know you're contacting our legislatures. What exactly are you asking them to do? Um, well, I'm asking them to look into this website and I'm asking them to make some clear and concise language on you know, what exactly is and is not legal. So they have this term on section 230C where it says that the internet provider is allowed to remove you know, material if they find it lewd, uh, I think it's lewd, violent, obscene, or otherwise objectionable. Okay, well, otherwise objectionable is very, very broad. Okay, and again, you gotta remember these platforms, they don't really wanna step into all this because once they do, then that makes it, in some ways it can make them lose section 230 immunity. And it's very complicated and hard to explain. So I'm not even gonna attempt to do that right now. Um, but I want to ask them to, I mean, th this has to be illegal. You cannot have, in my opinion, I don't think Reddit should be running forums on Suicide Watch at all. Um, but definitely a website like Sanctioned Suicide. I mean, that's gotta go, like no doubt about it. This should be illegal. Whoever is running this should absolutely be held accountable for what they are doing. They are, they are, they're, they're making it available. They are, they're making it happen. They're help make, they're assisting. They are that's definitely that. assisting, no doubt. So yeah, and uh, that's what I'm doing. And so Lindsey Graham and uh, Marsha Blackburn and Roger Wicker, Roger Wicker's a really big game player in section 230. They just introduced the, uh, the Online Freedom and Diversity Act, I think is what it's called. Let me see. Online Freedom and Viewpoint Diversity Act. And part of it actually um, goes down, and this just happened actually, I wanna say on September 8th, they introduced it. Um, maybe it was September 9th, I'm not sure, but it actually goes in there and talks about, you know, making a website that promotes self-harm illegal. Oh, so when I saw that, I was really happy. And I'm definitely in the process of uh, one of the newest victims that just came out, um, you know, I've been speaking with them and they are actually located in Mississippi where uh, uh, Roger Wicker is. And um, they are trying to get a meeting uh, so that we can, you know, talk with him about what's going on and obviously have other uh, people, you know, that have been, their loved ones have been victimized uh, by, by this. And I, I will tell you that former site members have reached out to me about what a bad place this is. Not just one, not just two, not just three, but more. Um, other people have reached out to me 
uh, that have found this, you know, on their families, you know, their loved ones' phone. Uh, some of them are still here, some of them are not. And uh, they just, the problem is, I mean, they're definitely not going to have a problem talking to the lawmakers, but for them to come out like I am and be so open about this, I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, they're, they're afraid. Right. So, yeah. So we have someone commented um, on our Facebook feed that they went to your website and saw that one man has advised over a thousand people how to end their life. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Oh my gosh. I don't know. That's, that's um. Oh yeah. That's unacceptable. Um, okay, so what what can we do to help you? So, oh, okay, so if you go to my website on, um, there's a Get Involved page and there's a list of senators. Now I put the list of senators, I'm sorry. That is fix the 26. Fix the 26 com. correct. Um, if you go on the website, there's a place where you can go where it says get involved and it's going to take you down there to the senators pages. Now these senators are specifically involved with the section 230 committee. Um, well, I'm just calling it section 230 committee, but really it's a commerce of science. And anyway, so they can go there and contact uh, the senators on there. And I pre did a, like a letter to make it easier for people because it is a lot to go on there and and fill out but to put it in your own words would be better I think uh, just so it doesn't look so you know uh, motorized going to these senators and you know let them know that websites like this are not and should not be allowed ever and what are we going to do to change this yeah and I know you've been in conversation with um, many of the um, the staff from a lot of these senators and um, basically told you you just got to make noise and you got to just mm -hmm. shoot from the rooftops and just don't yeah. stop. Right. Right. And that's what I'm doing. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm not going to stop doing it. Um, I'm getting emails. I'm getting um, messages on my social media accounts from, you know, the people from that website, <laughs> you wouldn't believe what I'm getting. And um, I, I think that they, Think they're going to like try and intimidate me and stop doing this and I'm not going to stop doing this I will not stop doing this ever there are children that are on that site that are getting lied to they I'm telling you it is an understatement actually to say that they normalize uh, suicide they glorify it they make it seem like it's such a great thing it's disgusting it, it's bad and the fact that our children are being exposed to this and, and parents, I think that they just sit back and they think, oh, well, it's the internet, you know, like, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's the internet, but it's got to stop. And again, when you, when you watch that social dilemma, it will really open your eyes as to what's really going on here. And, you know, it's our responsibility to our children right now to help in this fight because you know, what they're being exposed to is, is crazy with no liability. Right. Well, and yeah. as parents, it's our responsibility to our children to, um, you know, to, to check up on them, check up on what they're uh, searching on their phones, on the internet, on the web, you know, it's especially if you know your child is, is going through a depression or going through hard times and not talking to you. Cause I guarantee you they're probably talking to somebody. I mean, I would hope. And so maybe they're reaching out to these websites where they're actually getting, you know, some, some validity and people are, who are supporting them. And then it ends up being such a, you know, supporting them to take their life. I mean, it's. And I know that you, it's one of the questions is how parents can protect their children from these websites. And um, I've actually been speaking with a few companies. Bark is one of them. They have a service where you can um, track what's going on. It's an app, right? And you can install that Bark and then Net Nanny. But what you guys need to know as parents um, is, and probably a lot, I don't know, do you know what a VPN is? Not exactly. Tell us what that is. Okay. So a VPN is what they call a virtual private network. And what a virtual private network does is it's very easy. You just go to your app store, you install it. I promise you, if you ask your kids, they're probably gonna know what that is. And it's the way in school where uh, if 
they want to get around looking like they're coming from the IP address of the school, it's a way for them to navigate around that. So now they're able to, because schools have networks where they're set up to block certain content, okay? But if your child has VPN on their phone, which a lot of them do, and they're also made to be hidden, so they can look like a calculator app, they can look, you know, they, they have apps to where it can hide the actual app that it is. So as a parent, when you're looking at this app, you think it's a calculator, you think it's like something that looks, you know, legit and something your child would be okay. But when you actually open it, you realize it's something completely different. So what happens with a virtual private network is even if you have services like Bark or NetNanny, well, when Bark or NetNanny doesn't recognize the IP, it knows the IP address that you've told it to watch. And when it doesn't recognize that IP address, it can't tell you what's going on. And that's another thing that kids, um, a lot of them know about it. I mean, it's, yeah, it's definitely not a secret on, on with the younger community, especially when they're looking at things they're not supposed to be and all of that. So it's really hard. It's really hard. So I feel like as parents, we all know that you can't be over your children 24 hours a day while they're on their phone. It's not possible. You cannot live that way. Um, so you either don't let them have a phone, which is what I would all, all be, I would recommend that, or you um, you know monitor their times as much as you can, um, or you contact your senator and you say, hey, we need to start outlining what is legal and what's not, and where at a minimum, where can we report this stuff to besides the FBI? That's what I want to know. So I mean. Is that where we start? I mean, do we start with our local enforcement? Do they have any jurisdiction over the internet or does it just go straight to the FBI? They don't have any jurisdiction over the internet. Yeah, if they were to even take that case on, <clears throat> then they would refer it to the FBI, which I believe is what they've done in another case. Uh, so, yeah. So but, I know you mentioned another family, Jackie and um, her family in uh, what state is that Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania, uh-huh. So they have um, started this movement last year after they lost their daughter to the same website, right? Are they making any um, progress in their state? Uh, they are, they are, what they have done is they've started a, uh, it's called Sean's Law, their daughter's name was Sean, and they have gone to, or what they're trying to do is pass legislation to increase the penalties if you get caught encouraging suicide. So that's what they're, that's what they're doing right now. Yeah. So, and I, that's actually something that I think definitely needs to be done over here. I think you get like a $500 fine or something like that over here. It's pretty, I, I don't know. It's like a $500 fine if, if you encourage it and then it's two years in state prison if they can find out you actually aided in it. So that's definitely something that I would like to do as well. But I will say that um, you know, stay in time, well, that actually needs to happen immediately. But the, the, the thing is, is we don't know who these people are. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's something that it, both needs to be handled. Both of it needs, both, those sites need to be handled. Yeah, for sure. So that's what they're doing. And they've, they've made a lot of really good progress on that over there, a lot. These people are just um, cowards hiding behind an internet handle, encouraging mm -hmm. our children to take their lives. It's sick. Yeah. Um, you were interviewed recently by Channel 11, right? Mm -hmm. And are they going to hopefully do a story on this? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so bottom line is parents, please, um, Monitor your kids' social media accounts, their website activity, especially if you know that they are struggling with anything. Um, just be, you know, vigilant. You know your child better better than anyone, and um, just monitor them and get the apps like Bark, Net Nanny, and I'm sure there's others similar to that that can help. But like um, Kelly said, there's, you know, unfortunately, I'm there's. I'm definitely yeah. looking into it. And when I find out about something like that, that's actually a little bit more foolproof, then I will um, put it up on my website so everybody can see it for sure. I, that's really what I wanna do. I wanna just make sure everyone knows, you know. 
Mm -hmm. I would try to at least keep their parent or their children safe on the internet. So I encourage you to go to Kelly's website. It's um, fixthe26.com. And she has done a great job of putting just so much information on there. It's scary um, when you start looking at all that information and all the stories. Um, so it's, it's eye opening. So um, please everyone go to that website and then go to the get involved tab and learn what senators that we can contact and let's reach out to our senators. Let's be the voice for this. Let's shut these websites down and let's stop this. Um, let's protect our, kill, our kids um, because if, if we're, you know, we can't rely on anyone else to do it. So let's be right. the voice for them. Kelly, I am, just thank you so much. I'm so proud of you. I know, you know, you, this is pretty recent. I know you, you know, it wasn't, it hasn't been that long ago since you lost no. your I'm so sorry. Um, no, I know. You were such I'm a running on fumes, but I'm telling you every day, especially when I wake up in the morning and I, and I don't know if it's because that's, you know, when everything happened, but I just, it's like every day, it just, I'm not stopping. I'm not going to stop. I can't do it. I feel like I'm fighting for him and I'm fighting for, I just have to. Well, so. Thank you, Kim, because you've been here for me the whole way through, and I really appreciate it a lot. Well, um, you know, I we want to do everything we can to help help your cause, um, help help bring this down, you know. And and personally, I will be praying for you because I know that once you put yourself out there like you have, you know, you just open yourself open for attack. And so um, <sighs> I pray for you in that that regards as well. So thank you. Um, all right, guys, it was um, a pretty um, yeah but um it's something that we needed to make parents aware of so thank you kelly for sharing your story and your information and thank you for your fight so please thank go you. to her, her website fixit26.com learn what you can do um to 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 shut these websites down all right Thanks, thank you so much all right bye guys <laughs>